Thanks, Nita. Um, I was asked to, to speak on the Western Ghats report, um, but when I agreed to do that uh, to Mr. Ishwaran, I wasn't aware that I was going to have two of the review panelists going to be here, uh, both Sunita and Kanchan. So uh, do excuse me if I continue talking about it. No, no, we'd the love to hear more about <laughs> it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, okay. This is a free tutorial for us. No. Well, <laughs> if I knew that, I would bring, uh, would have brought the full presentation. No, but I, um, you know, I completely We're ran out. We're hoping that you will come to the panel and make it. So that's what. Um, anytime, <laughs> anytime. Um, both Ashish and Ravi have actually set out the stage beautifully for me because uh, they've covered all the important uh, issues which are of importance. So I don't need to get into, mm -hmm. into um, giving you the background for why the Western Guts report, but I will give you the immediate background. But just as a disclaimer, I come in here as an economist working on issues of mining, working on issues of the environment, and I've been trying to ex do exactly what you said, Ravi, mainstreaming these into environmental issues. And I owe this to uh, Mr. Ishwaran, who 20 years ago told me, I think you have a heart, you should work on environmental economics. <laughs> so uh, and then that is exactly when I moved from looking just at energy economics, which is what I, I had worked on, to working on environmental economics. I owe my any bit of environmental credentials to you, whether good or bad. But anyways, coming to the Western Ghats study. Um, Honestly, I have no idea why it has been under such a cloak of secrecy um, or why there's so much noise about it because we did everything that was asked to be done. We did it in a completely transparent and inclusive way. We involved all the stakeholders that we could possibly have done in a year's time. We presented the findings to various governmental uh, authorities, including the previous minister, and then it just died. Uh, for a year, there was complete silence, but let me go through it um, in a little more detail since I have 10 minutes or 15 minutes or whatever. What was the motivation of the study? The Western Ghats, as you know, cover six states, uh, all the way from Gujarat, a small part of Gujarat, down to Kerala. And what was happening was that you had these huge mining activities, the state of Goa, those of you who have been following the news, particularly very badly affected by mining. All of it is happening in the Western Ghats. It's been happening ever since 1945. And the question that was asked of us is, how long are we going to allow mining to mess up uh, the biological diversity and also the social and cultural diversity of the state? So it, isn't it time for us to stop this? And I have any amount of detailed information on what mining is doing to Goa, but I'm not going to go into what mining is, is, is doing to Goa. But the fact is that what mining is doing to Goa propelled a lot of the thinking with regard to what mining can do to other states in the Western Ghats. They are not there yet, but they will be there one day. So it was with the idea of, of you know, protecting the guts that, you know, subsequent suggestions have come in, and I, and I will come back to that. So the motivations were the very, very harmful effects of mining uh, in Goa, uh, on water, on the di biodiversity, on the forests, on people's lives. Uh, I have really personally been part of the studies that have been done, so it's not just uh, secondary information. And a lot of misinformation that has been going around from the various mining companies and mining lobbies, including the government. So from um, ever since 19, late 1980s, you know, people have been talking about this, but no one's been listening. But anyway, the second were the hydropower projects that were coming up in the Western Ghats, and there were states which ex very much, uh, uh, the people of the states bothered that so many of these were coming up, especially in the state of Kerala, where you had something like seven uh, uh, dams being put up on one river, which was completely drying up the river, so that was a cause of concern. So, uh, so hydropower projects, coal thermal power plants in, in Maharashtra, the, the states, uh, the districts of Ratnagiri, Sindhudurg, and uh, Raigarh, which were badly affected by heavy polluting industry, also in the Western Ghats. So there were lots of reasons why the local people were agitated, and that's what prompted uh, Jairam Ramesh to uh, put together a panel to, to, set, uh, to do the study. Madhav Gadgil was the chair, and uh, all of the people of the panel were, were, were put together by Jairam Ramesh. And they're mostly ecologists, and I think I was the only one who was a non-ecologist on that panel. And then you had a number of government uh, officials. 
from day one, our approach was very much along the lines that you said. We did not want a development that was exclusionary, and we did not want a conservation that excluded people. So the, uh, the idea was, how do we come up with a management system that would involve people and would also protect people and yet protect um, the environment? Now, I don't need to get into the biodiversity value of the Western Ghats and all of this, all of you know very well. But our key thing was to look at what was the ecological status of the Western Ghats and, and how could you then come up with a regime to protect this. So what did we do? We said, and at that time, if you remember, there was this whole discussion on go, no go areas and the go, no go areas was being done in a very non-scientific way. <clears throat> Excuse me. So we thought it would be useful to have a scientific manner at which we could come up with environmental regulation zones. We did not support a no-go completely. We wanted a nuanced, layered approach to regulation of effectivities. So after having um, talked to a lot of people, after having gone to every of the states, having over 14 meetings, all of which the minutes are on the website. In fact, I objected to having such detailed minutes on the website because even, you know, sometimes you speak very loosely when, you, when you're speaking in a meeting, but even that was reported. And now looking back, given the way the government shut us up, I'm so happy we did that. At least the minutes are up on the website uh, because uh, we were never invited to speak uh, the moment we submitted the report, and the report went from me, we were asked not even to share it with our panel members. We were asked not even to allow any discussion on it. It was, you know, it was like we had, um, what's the word, gone against the national interest. That's what we were told. Um, anyone, please read the report and tell us what is against the national interest, except saying, don't have so much mining in the Western Ghats. Um, and it's not that we said no mining at all. If you read between the lines, what did we do? We came up with the psychologically sensitive zones based on social ecological criteria. Completely defensible, and you can go, the data is there. It's limited to the extent that the data uh, were limited. And you know we're not responsible for that data, so within one year, what could we do? We used that data that we had. Um, we arrived at the zones, and we then said we would have zone one, two, and three. The zone one was the most ecological valuable. Now, how do you decide where to draw the boundaries? You have the protected areas, so wherever the zones, uh, you know, whatever was above the protected area value, we said would be zone one, okay? Now, if anyone wants to tweak it, and I'm giving you a clue, uh, Sunita and Kanchan, if you want to reduce the amount of zone one, and this is exactly what we were hoped we would happen post the, uh, the, the report, was that each state would look at its own interests and say, you know, you don't need to have your zone one so low. You can push it a little further. So we have uh, numbers, we have indices, so numbers from 10 to 1, 10 being the most valuable, 1 being the least ecological valuable, and uh, more or less 10 to 4 is the zone one. So if you want to reduce this, the states can just say, okay, let's go to zone five, and anything below zone five belongs to zone two and three, and accordingly, the regulation, uh, you know, whatever the activities are, would be available. However, that opportunity to negotiate never happened. So we used basic scientific techniques to arrive at this, hoping that the political uh, negotiation would happen after that with the governments, but it didn't happen. Uh, so. What is it that we regulated? Let me move to the second. What is it that we regulated? We didn't say no development, people get out of the Western Ghats, we didn't say that. We looked at exactly the kinds of things both Ravi and Ashish mentioned that affect biodiversity and we said in zone one, you should not have this. Plastics, GMOs, mining, um, and um, what, what else did we say? Hydropower projects, the large hydropower projects. Uh, coal thermal power projects, which are huge. So if you can have it at the small size and you can regulate it and you can ensure responsible development, you can have this. But all of them were activities that would harm uh, biodiversity and harm local people. So it's not that, in fact, we also proposed very um, pro-development activities which we wanted should happen in order that people would have an interest in protecting the guts. Now, um, I'm not going to take up too much time, um, but just, okay, the Western Ghats um, Ecological Authority. Some questioners saying you did not take center state relations into, into account. That is not true at all. 
Uh, we were very conscious of the center state relations. We were very conscious. We had done our homework. We were part of the center state committee, so we knew the, the laws and the rules. We had lawyers on board. What we did is we talked of an umbrella organization, which is the Western Ghats Ecology Authority. Why? Because you cannot cut bits and pieces. The Western Ghats traverses six states. So you needed to have something which would cross these six states, right? So you would have an umbrella organization which would connect with state ecological authorities in each state. And these authorities would then connect with state pollution control boards upwards, you know, whatever state boards, biodiversity boards, but also downwards to the biodiversity uh, management cells, to the district planning committees. So it would be an up and down movement. What we tried to do there is bring on board, connect all the different parts and groups so that it would become a more inclusive governance, but a multi-centered governance, that's what we've called it. Not a top-down or only a bottom-up, but a multi-centered governance because that's what the Western Ghats required. Uh, so basically, we'll, uh, the issues which are the hot potato issues now are with regard to the zoning with regard to what are the activities that we regulated, but essentially it's about mining and it's about the power plants. I don't hear anything else. And the third is the uh, center state relations with regard to the Western Ghats. Now, it could be that the language is strong of the Western Ghats Authority, so you can tweak that. You can tweak the, uh, the uh, ecologically sensitive zones. And the mining, if you think that you can have mining in other parts, you know, not in Goa, in any, any case in Goa at the moment they're banned, but in other parts, then you can take a call some, if some states want to do it. It's, you know, it's an entirely uh, political decision at this point. Also, what we said is that if mining is a, for a critical mineral that the country needs, you should go ahead and do it. Um, what we said is not necessary is when we are sending iron ore to China. Tell me, who is benefiting from this? Not that I have any problems with China. I'm not an anti-China person. But the iron ore from Goa goes to China, went to Japan, and the people of Goa were actually paying for the environmental and social costs with the ja Chinese or the Japanese did not pay for. And the profits went to a very small select group of people, and that was it. So just to give you an idea of exactly the things that have been talked about earlier, in the Western Ghats, we tried to bring it all together. Unfortunately, it didn't seem to be very much appreciated. I'll stop there. Thank you.